It was a happy accident, to be honest. Me and my partner were sort of sick of the UK weather and we decided to get out and spend a year traveling in Australia. And bought a van, as you do. Did it up, drove up and down the East Coast and we sort of ended up in Newcastle on the same day the Pasha Balka washed up on the beach. So we were living in a van at the time my partner, she's an illustrator, and so she was out drawing all the old buildings and we had the surf club there full of pigeons. And I was out surfing and we fell in love with the place from there. And we sort of never left, really. It was such a big contrast to where we've lived previously. Birmingham, London, Bristol, very urban, dense cities. And Newcastle has this overriding sense that nature is very close by. And you can always feel it, you can always see it, you can always smell it, the ocean is there. And I think that was one of the things that got under our skin and made us really love the place. The other thing was, when we first arrived, you could feel the potential of the town. And that's really why we stayed, you know, because feeling that energy of growth um, is, is, is addictive and it's, and it's a great place to be. The idea of smart cities, you know, is often banded around. And often the technology is the focus of a smart city's thought play. But the reality is it's the human aspects of the technology that are more important. So our vision is to reinvent the way that people travel, using technology to bring them together. So the idea is that currently we, we choose to drive by ourselves. And we have this power inside our phones that can, you know, we can find other people who are sharing the same journeys as us. And we can connect and bring people together by using that technology. It's a perfect size city for new technology deployments like this to, to try and unpick what's going on. It, it's, it's handleable that you can sort of manage the size of the city. And it's also experiencing a lot of the problems that global cities have, but on a smaller scale. And all those things together make Newcastle that place where new ideas, new technology can actually grow and flourish. Starting in Newcastle, we have now expanded to over 30 or so clients across Australia, New Zealand, some in Southeast Asia, and recently we've got a couple of guys starting in the US, which is really exciting. They have the same problems, but on a much bigger scale. <laughs> I guess one of the things that's, that's always fascinated us here is you know, we focus a lot on behavior change, and that initial instinctual choice is I want to get in the car by myself. It's my own personal space. And I think people become better versions of themselves when they're actually with other people when they're in the car together traveling. And so that's one of the things that we found fascinating is to getting feedback from users to say, actually, this has changed the way I actually exist from day to day. I actually talk to people, I connect a lot more, and I feel happier when I get to work because I've shared a journey with someone else on the way through. Technology can be used for good and not evil. <laughs>out of Sydney to come to Newcastle to take advantage of the lifestyle that can be afforded to startups. There's also spaces like this. I mean, this is in itself is one of the things that attracted us to, to be here. We can have a great space. We can be right in the city, right in the heart of things. And that's a great way to attract great talent from the local universities and from overseas. As we've grown, so is the city. And I think the population growth in the university means you're, you're getting an influx of, of smart people with fresh perspectives, fresh ideas that are coming to the city and that's another asset and it's going to really help to, to improve and change the way that Newcastle works as a city.